usually with Cupid in the early game, if you're missing your abilities, you're in for a little bit of trouble. They're jumping onto our Savannahs pretty hard. We're able to get the pick onto the Cerberus. We're going to put a point into our dash, and then we're going to dash after this Jinwei, and we're able to get the pick. What a do, Scooby Boo! It's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a viewer request to play Cupid as Carrie. If you are new to the channel, I upload six to seven times a week. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right and what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If you are a returning viewer, it is a back-to-back -back game. In today's video, we are going to try to discuss all of the possible build options and build choices that we have for Cupid. So we're going to see how that goes. But let's go ahead and review Cupid's abilities, that way we are all on the same page. I think it is worth starting with Cupid's passive. Every hit with a basic attack gives Cupid a heart stack that increases the damage or healing of his abilities. His heart bomb, which is his one, and his fields of love, which is his ultimate, will always consume the heart stacks, and at 8 stacks they will have an additional effect. So that means if you have 4 stacks of hearts and you use your one, you're going to have zero stacks after you use your one. So Cupid's one. Cupid is going to fire a line attack. If it hits an enemy, it is going to slow them by 20% and it's going to place a heart bomb on top of them. After a few seconds, the heart bomb is going to go off and deal more damage in a circle around them. If you had the eight stacks of hearts before firing your one, your one is going to stun them when it detonates. You're really looking to use this mechanic. You're really looking to get the eight hearts and then use your one to get the stun and then follow up with some basics. Cupid's two, Cupid is going to summon three hearts. The hearts are going to heal him or any teammates that pick it up. If an ally picks up the heart, Cupid is going to recover 30 mana. So Cupid has a way to, re to sustain his health and to sustain his mana. Pretty bad miss right there. Usually with Cupid in the early game, if you're missing your abilities, you're in for a little bit of trouble. They're jumping onto our Savannahs pretty hard. We're able to get the pick onto the Cerberus. We're going to put a point into our dash, and then we're going to dash after this Jinwei, and we're able to get the pick. Double kill. Great way to start the game. Cupid's third ability is a dash that's going to leave behind a bunch of little hearts. Anyone who walks on this little heart field is going to get increased movement speed by 30%. Whenever Cupid dashes, he's also going to increase his attack speed. At level 1, it is a 4% increase. At level 5, it is a 20% increase. And then Cupid's ultimate, Fields of Love. Cupid is going to fire a large circle onto the ground. This circle is going to cripple enemies. And what Cripple does is it prevents enemies who have a jump from being able to use that jump. So for example, the Hades would not be able to dash, the Cerberus would not be able to jump, Terra could not dash, Jinwei could ult but she could not use her dash, and it doesn't really affect Bonatos all too much. So the Cripple is pretty helpful. Whenever the ult detonates, it is going to mesmerize the enemy for 1.5 seconds. So Mesmerize is very similar to a stun, except for it's different. In a Mesmerize, they're going to be stunned there. As soon as you attack them with some damage, they're going to wake up and become unmezzed. If you were to use your ultimate at the full 8 hearts, you are going to double this Mesmerize duration. So now that we've kind of gone over all of Cupid's abilities, Let's go ahead and kind of talk about his build and some of his build options. There is a fight going on in the left jungle, or in the right jungle, so we're going to rotate in, see if we can help our Oelix out with the Thonatos. Thonatos is definitely pickable. If we could land our one on him, he would probably go down. Get him with a basic. So now that we've gotten a pick on their jungler, I think it is time to steal their purple. We want to try to get something for our aggression in their jungle. It'd be kind of silly to get a pick, their purple be open, and then us just not get it. So we're throwing some hearts down, we're kind of at full health, it's kind of for Sylvanas, and if he picks any up, we're going to gain some mana back. We are going to be starting with, with Hunter's Blessing, I feel like that's probably the start no matter what with Cupid, because you want that increased attack speed so you can get your 8 stacks a little bit quicker. Then we are going to be going into Transcendence. I think you have the option here between going into Transcendence or Devourer's Gauntlets. 
I think Transcendence is going to provide you a little bit more power in the early game, meaning that you're going to hit a little harder, your abilities are going to deal a little bit more damage. However, the trade-off is, is in this build, we don't really have any early game lifesteal, so we're going to heavily rely on Sylvanas' heals and our Cupid heal. If we were to go into Devourer's Gauntlets, we would not really have to worry about lifesteal that much. Instead, we would kind of just passively be sitting in the lane trying to get an advantage whenever we can. We're trying to get some basics onto the Serb. We do have our ultimate. Neither of them have their ult. We're going to go ahead and ult down on the Serb. So right here, I ult and I use my 1 really quick. Because I use my 1 before my ultimate goes off, the 8 stacks get used on the 1 instead of the ultimate. So in the best case scenario, you ult, it's going to cripple them. You can dash in to get the increased movement speed. You shoot the one and it hits them before your ultimate goes off. The one will consume the eight stacks and it'll apply a heart bomb on the enemy that is going to stun them when it goes off. So you use the field to slow them, to cripple them, to land your one, the field goes off, it stuns them, but then they still have a heart bomb on them. And then as soon as they become unstunned from your ultimate, they become stunned from the heart bomb. Usually if you can land this combo, it forces the enemy to either back or you get the pick. With Transcendence, I feel like this combo of ult and one just does a little bit more damage in the early game. And it might be a little bit more effective, but I think going into Devourer's Gauntlets or Transcendence are both viable. I kind of lean towards Transcendence. There are three over in the right, Poseidon versus Thanatos in the jungle. We're going to rotate in, see if there's anything we can do to help. Enemy missing right. After we go into Transcendence, we're going to be going into Ninja Tabai. Ninja Tabai is just the attack speed boots. One thing to note is that after Transcendence, we would have the option to go into Berserker Shield. Berserker Shield is going to give you some physical protections, some increased attack speed, and a passive that is going to help you deal some damage as you get low. However, we don't really want that item this game because they have three magical characters on their team. That was an easy pick. They have three magical characters on their team, so the Berserker Shield would only be helping us with two characters on the enemy team. Because of that, I do not think it is worth it this game. I think that item is very effective if the enemy team has three or more physical characters. If they have four physical characters, I feel like the item is a must. And if they have three, I feel like it would be helpful, but it's not necessarily a must. We are just going to keep pushing our lead, keep invading their camps. We almost have enough money to get Transcendence so we can start backing and stacking. We're going to make a rotation for our purple. The purple is going to remove enemy protections if they are near me, and it is also going to increase my attack speed. So the extra attack speed on Cupid is always very nice, it's going to allow me to stack those hearts a little bit quicker. So at the beginning of this game, the Sylvana says, I'm a bad support, I don't play support, and my reply was like, have fun, don't worry about it. I've been trying to get him to rotate to the middle lane. For a little bit because I feel like I can control this right lane pretty easily. If it is just me versus this Jin Wei and Cerberus, I will be getting the full XP per wave while they will be splitting the XP per wave. So as long as it is a 1v2 over here, I will actually be leveling up faster than them. But I can understand as a new player to support, he sees two people over here, he wants to rotate over and help. I'm gonna back and stack. I'm trying to encourage the Sylvanas to go mid, but also tell him, like, he's not bad. Like, good job. Nice job. You rock. I got right lane. Go mid. So, like, that's very non-aggressive. Attack middle lane. Help middle lane. No problem. 
I feel like that's an effective way to use VGS to communicate with somebody, to go mid. Probably could have thrown a thanks in there. And don't get me wrong, like, this guy was not bad by any means. It was just time for him to rotate mid and start helping out in the mid lane. Let me farm over here, and then maybe provide some additional support when going against that Hades. Hades is a very strong character. Very strong character before mid-season, very strong character after mid-season. We miss her once, so we're going to have to dash out. Because we do not have any lifesteal in our build early on, we are going to be maxing out our 1, and then we're going to be maxing out our 2. I know that if you are in a super sweaty setting, you would really want your 3 maxed out after your 1, so you can get the increased attack speed. But I feel like maxing out the 2 with this build is very friendly for all levels of play. It might not be the min-max, the absolute best thing to do, but we don't have any lifesteal and the hearts are going to allow us to heal and stay in lane just a that much longer. It's friendly for a lot of reasons. So I would recommend building it like this. If you were to max out your 3 right after your 1, I feel like that would be most effective in a build like Devourer's Gauntlets or with Devourer's Gauntlets. That way you have the lifesteal and you're not necessarily worried. You're trying to face trade. With Transcendence, we're not necessarily trying to face trade. We are trying to poke, maybe get a pick, and then disengage. So we're really using our three to get out. To where if we went with Devourer's Gauntlets, we might be using our three to initiate. So right now, we're just working on stacking. We could probably get a pick onto the Cerberus. We're gonna throw our ult down, we hit him with our one. We get the stun, and we're able to get the pick. That's a very hard combo to counter, especially if you do not have beads. Oh, the basic attack trade. The basic attack trade. Jinwei's gonna ult out. I don't know, she could have gotten me there. I could have gotten her there. She was the one to step out, so I would have I would have died for the curiosity right there, Jin. So we're gonna get some poke onto the tower. See if their purple is up. We're gonna get some hearts. Get that nice heal online. If we didn't have our hearts that maxed out, we would not get that much of a heal, and we would probably have to back a couple of times by now but because we're going into transcendence we felt obliged to level up the two after the one and now we have some fat heals we get a basic off onto Thanatos we're gonna assume that he's ulting us we dash away it looks like he's going for the Wheelix we're gonna pull back see if we can help out our Wheelix and get ready for a bunch of misses miss 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 got him with the one well, now we're gonna go mid Our, right, our lane is open, the minions are meeting in the middle, so I am missing some XP for being in mid right now. We dash in, right as Cupid dash, or right as Hades dashes in. Hades recovered a lot of health right there, but he did just blow his whole kit, so we're going to focus on him and then the tower. We're going to get this pick onto the tower. Junwei is in my lane, pushing on the tower line. So we probably should rotate back, help her out a little bit. Your right tower is under and it looks like she is gone. So we're just going to clear up the minion wave. One more stack and we have Transcendence fully stacked. So with Cupid's 1, if the minions have already met and are standing still in the middle and you use your 1, it is really hard to get the explosion to hit both the melee minions and the archers. One way you can try to deal with this is as the minions are walking towards the middle of the lane, you shoot the front and then you land some basic attacks. The basic attacks are going to like stagger the melee minions, allowing the archer minions to catch up. So kind of like that. And then boom, we can get the whole wave with it. 
Now it's try now it's time to try to get some poke onto this Jin Wei. We use our ultimate to apply the cripple. We hit her with the one and we're able to chase and get the pick. An ally has been slain. So this is a pretty one-sided game, I feel like. I feel like our team's winning pretty much in every lane. I bet that Scotty Terra matchup's not very fun for the Terra. Although it looks like she has high pressure in that lane right now. We're going to work on this wave, maybe get a poke or two onto the tower, but we really don't want to be this far pushed up on the map. It looks like we're just going to back. We have 4,000 gold in our pocket, so we're gonna go back and spend. We're gonna pick up Aussie, and then we are gonna be going into the fail knot, but it looks like I forgot about that. So we are gonna go into our Aegis as a second relic and just leave Fountain with some money in our pocket because we were unsure at the time. We are gonna be going into, so let's go ahead and kind of review where we're at. So we have Three items and a starter item. I think the starter item is a no-brainer on Cupid. You want that attack speed for his passive. For the first item, Transcendence or Devourer's Gauntlets. Transcendence is going to give you more power, allow you to be a little bit more effective early game. Devourer's Gauntlets has a disgusting amount of lifesteal. is going to allow you to stay in the lane. You're going to eventually build up that power. And it probably helps you out in the late game a little bit more than Transcendence. So, splitting off of those two items, assume one build is Transcendence, one build is Fail Not. Not Fail Not, is... They were Seek and I just had some weird audio issues, I apologize. We're going to assume that one build is Transcendence, the other is Devourer's Gauntlets. With the Transcendence build and Devourer's Gauntlets build on Cupid, I think it makes sense to go into the Ninja Tabai. That is going to increase your attack speed on both builds. It's going to allow you to get your 8 stacks and get your Heart Bombs off a little bit more frequent. With the Transcendence build, we don't have any Lifesteal, so we're going to be going into Aussie. Aussie is a great Lifesteal item, but you don't really want to use it with Devourer's Gauntlet. You don't want to double down on the attack speed that much or the lifesteal that much. Aussie is an amazing complementary lifesteal item for Transcendence. With the Devourer's Gauntlet, if we were to get that lifesteal a little bit early on, we would have our and the enemy team is going to surrender. So there is another game coming up. This one was a little closer. Well, let's go ahead and check out the stats for this game. We got the top kills. What about that damage though? Too quick. Couldn't tell. Anyway, in this game, we're going to be playing with an Athena. And we're going to be doing a very similar start. This time, we just get a little farther into the build. So in this game, we were in against three physical characters, whereas in the last game, we were, only against, we were only going against two. Sung Wukong and Soul is kind of a weird matchup for this lane. We get a basic off onto Soul. Your right tower is under attack. So right here, I'm holding, well, with Athena, Athena has a taunt which is going to make enemies walk towards her. If I can hold my heart bomb until Athena taunts, that kind of guarantees that I'm going to land it. Or it gives me a great opportunity to land it. So just like that, Sun Wukong pops his shell. We're able to get the first blood. That's an additional 500 gold in our pocket. So now it is just the soul. If Athena could get the taunt off, we could absolutely get a pick on her. Holding my heart bomb, kind of waiting for any kind of setup. Does not look like I'm going to get it. So we're going to fall back and go for the harpies. No 
Transcendent, Ninja Tabai, Aussie. You have a decent amount of power, you have a decent amount of attack speed, you got some flat pen, and you got some lifesteal. Devour is Gauntlet, Boots, and let's go with Atalanta's Bow. You're gonna have some lifesteal, you're gonna have a decent amount of attack speed, you're gonna have some power, and you're gonna have 20% penetration instead of that flat pen. I think if you're trying to smack with your abilities, the Transcendence Aussie option is a little bit more effective, but if you're trying to build that late game build, I think going into Devourer's Gauntlets, Ninja Tabai, Atalanta's Bow, Rage, and then Crit items is probably the way to go. If you wanted to fit crit into the Transcendence build, you would do it right after Aussie, but that would not give you the flat penetration, not the flat, the percent penetration that the Atalanta's Bow and the Serrated Edge and the Fail Knot would give. He almost got this soul. Athena got a good taunt, but she's too far forward and I'm getting tagged by minions, so I'm gonna have to fall back, get some hearts. Trying to avoid the Sun Wukong, but he lands his dash. We hit our one onto him. He's smart. He's going to take the Heart Bomb away from the minions. So that way my one did no damage to the minion wave right there. Managing to dodge these Soul 2s, which is very helpful. That ability could start chunking pretty early on. They move for their purple. We're gonna clear this wave and then move for our purple. We're gonna use the three, so I get there a little bit quicker, but then it also gives the 30% movement speed to Athena, so she can also get here a little bit quicker. Athena is backing. She has her ultimate. Okay. If I could position myself somewhere near the enemy, that could be very helpful. We did just get our ultimate. Nobody's around. Little unfortunate, but not a whole lot that we can do. We have enough money for our ninja tabai. We're going to try to clear this next wave and then back. I didn't get the taunt, I'm gonna use my ultimate. I get the ult one combo off onto the soul, but she uses her Aegis. We're gonna fall back just a little bit. Go ahead and back for our boots. We're gonna head back to lane Ally with two health slain. potions and two mana potions and some ninja tabai online. Take this job. Athena went down when I backed. I told her be right back. She kind of stayed in a bad position, so felt like I tried to do my part. On my way. Poseidon's making a rotation over. They just went into jungle, so we're gonna try to rotate with them. Make sure that he is okay. Soul is definitely the ideal target. We get our one off onto her. I don't know if it's going to stun. It does stun because it had the eight stacks. Sung Wu Kong is a G. Comes in, eats a body shot, and pops a shell for the soul. That's a good support. Good support play. I didn't want to chase that because if I were to have used my dash aggressively, I didn't know if I was going to get punished from an enemy kind of hanging around that wasn't in the line of sight. So I just played that very cautiously. We probably could have gone in, but I don't think that was would have been the smart play or at least the safe play. So, same build, different early game. Is ready. This game, after going into, or after getting our Transcendence online, 
we're still gonna wanna max out our one and then max out our two so that way we can get the fat heals from the hearts in the mid game while we still don't have any life steal online. Maxing out the two allows for the flexibility of you don't have to get life steal right after you get transcendence online. This game would be an ideal game. Well, maybe not ideal. This would be a good game to buy Berserker Shield because they have three physical characters. If they have four physical characters, I feel like Berserker Shield is a must, but with three would help, but it's not necessary. I think I should have built it in this game after Transcendence, but we'll get there when we get there. We're going to use our one on the wave, hopefully clear it. Fenrir gets his ultimate off. We're going to help him out. Probably did not need to use our ultimate right there, especially since there's a grouping of three in the jungle right there. That would have been a great time to use my ultimate. CERN has a good ult, dashes through. I'm pretty weak. I'm going to run. It looks like he's going in lane, cutting into the jungle, so I'm going to start cutting towards mid. He's still chasing. Fenrir gets a triple kill. Love it. We're going to get our one off onto the CERN. He uses his bead and then his dash. I don't think we're going to be able to get him. In fact, I think we're just going to clear this wave and then back. I'm trying to let the squad know. It's purple time. Be right back. Need healing. Um, I need a little help tanking it, Athena. Appreciate you. And we're going to go ahead and back. Not quite enough money to get our Transcendence online, but we're not really in a position to hang around. So we're going to back, pick up some more potions, and now we should be able to get the 1,400 gold needed to get Transcendence online. And we'll back shortly after that. We're gonna make our way to the minions. An enemy has been slain. So one thing we could be doing that is on a very micro level is if you get the last hit on minions, you actually get more gold. So if we are uncontested and we just have all the time in the world to clear the waves, then it might be an idea to try to get that final hit onto the minion wave. To kind of entertain your time while you're waiting, but also to maximize your performance in the game it's not a huge deal if you don't get the last hit and you just get the assist we're able to get soul to use her three that's going to be important to note now we're going to want to try to engage her while she is on cooldown for her three we dash in she uses her ultimate we use our ultimate we hit her with the one we get ulted by mercury which is super unfortunate we're going to wiggle wiggled for a while but they're able to catch up i feel like had mercury not showed up we played that extremely well had we known mercury was going to show up we probably wouldn't have dashed into that soul but we were trying to we know that we got her three down we were trying to get her to step out from her tower line so we started backing that caused her to step up and then her instinct was just ult me as soon as she was out of the tower range, I was going to dash forward. Just so happens I dash right as she ults. I get my ult off, get my one off, she aguses it. If Mercury didn't come in, I think I would have been able to finish that pick. But Mercury did come in, he blew me up, did a lot of damage, and was able to save the soul. So... I was thinking about this the other day, I was like, yeah, I feel like I played that play perfect. The only thing that I could have done was get wards, and maybe beads. So, I make an effort for the rest of the game to try to pick up some wards, or at least I will once I use some of my potions. The thing about smite is almost every death is preventable at some level, and even if you do everything perfectly right, it could be as simple as looking up at the minimap and seeing Mercury leave mid lane, heading into the left jungle. And that, if I would have seen that, or if that would have happened, that could have prevented me from making the decisions that I made, and I might have been able to survive that. 
There's another Mercury ult. We're gonna use our ultimate on him. We miss our one. Athena gets the taunt. Here comes a soul ult and a Sun Wukong. It is time to skedaddle. But they're able to get me. They were warned. An enemy has been slain. Candy? Our okay. allies are in so trouble. So now it is ward time. We, that's two back to back, where if we would have had a little bit of vision in jungle, we might have made some adjustments to how we approach that. So we're going to pick up some wards. I do feel like wards in mid lane next to the harpies are just as effective as wards towards more. our lane. In the sense that you can tell when people are rotating left. We need to help our friends. Looks like they were able to get the Gold Fury, but we traded out a few people, and it looks like our Poseidon is going to be able to get out. We are trying to stack, so we're going to be in this lane farming the minion wave for quite a while. Sorry? Here comes Mercury. We're going to go ahead and use the beads. That is enough to get him to fall back and just clean up the minion wave. We're going to go ahead and hit this camp since it wanted to give me a little love tap as I walked by. And here is the soul. We're going to get a few more hearts. Then we're going to use our one. Oh, it looks like we're trying to be aggressive on the soul. We hit her with the one. She's going to use her three. Since she used her three, there's not a whole lot we can do. Except for now, we know her three is on cooldown. So if we go in super aggressive, there's a chance things will go our way. So right there, I waited too long before shooting my one off. My ult actually went off before my win, before my one went off. So the extra eight heart stacks, it applied to the ultimate, not to the one. So the mesmeration duration was doubled, but then I immediately poked her. So she got unmezzed. With the Cupid ultimate and the Cupid one, you wanna have the eight hearts. Hit them with the one before the ultimate actually goes off. You can use the one to cripple them and slow them. Or you can use the ult to cripple them and slow them, and then try to get the one off. But in that instance, it took me a little bit too long to get the one off, so it was not as effective as a combo. King Arthur is able to clean up in right. It looks like CERN is going to rotate into that team fight. I am still stacking. Soul is still over here, so I'm just going to exist in my lane. Sorry team, can't really rotate right now. It's not the time for me. So we have our one and our two maxed out. We get the one off onto the soul. Soul's gonna oath us. That does a lot of damage. We are able to get the pick with a little bit of health left. So we're gonna dash away, throw out some hearts, consume the hearts, and then work on the minion wave. We need one more wave, and we should be able to get Aussie. So instead of going into Aussie right here, I think we probably should have gone into Berserker Shield, and then gone into Aussie afterwards. I feel like as a carry, you just need some form of lifesteal going on, whether that be Devourer's Gauntlets, or whether that be Aussie. Being able to gain health back as you damage an enemy is just crucial. So this game we went with Aussie again. On my way. Mercury's hanging around. We're going to clear this wave. Get a poke. Nope. He's going to be able to back. So we are fully stacked, which means we hit our power spike. We're going to be trying to trade with the soul whenever we can. We are 2, 2, and 3, but we have 3 levels on the enemy soul. 
we get our Heart Bomb off onto the Sung Wukong. It's going to stun him in his dash. But he's very tanky, and we don't really have Percentage Pen online. We just have the Watch Flat Pen. Please. We're going to go ahead and put a Ward between the Harpy Camp and that wall. It's going to allow us to get Vision on anyone who is coming through the jungle. Athena's ulting again, so we're going to try to step near this Artem, this Aphrodite. Wow, I forgot her name for a second. Fenrir is going to dash in. Right now, my back is to the enemy team, so I'm going to try to position farther back, heal up a little bit, and then get eyes on the enemy. Cern is going to rotate in. He has Brawler's Beat Stick, so he's applying anti-heal to everybody on our team, which means our hearts are not going to be as effective, or our basic attack heals. Fenrir jumps in, super aggressive, Mercury ults from behind. We're going to dash back to our tower. This is not looking like a good fight for us. Double kill. We're still hanging around just to try to do our best to get our team out of there. Your bending skills are we no somehow joke. got a pick on the Mercury. I guess Tower did it. Tower minions, we're gonna pick up the hearts. We're gonna get the heart bomb onto CERN. Even though it's not gonna stun him, he doesn't know that, so he's going to dash away. Trying to get some autos onto the Sun Kong. We get our heart bomb off. We're able to get the pick there. It looks like CERN is going to be able to get away. King Arthur is able to clean him up. So now we should be able to get Gold Fury. I think that was a full wipe from the team, and then their Afro and Soul have just respawned because the fight was that long. The Oni Fury is going to give us a better wave in each lane. It's also going to give us some gold. We're going to pick that bad boy up. We have 2,300 in hand. And there goes a soul on their team. So yesterday, I think I played four or five games, and not one of them was a full game. So that's partially why I'm uploading two games of Cupid. Just a rough day to try to record yesterday. Sometimes that's how Smite is, and sometimes these 4v5s, surrenders, all these things, it's kind of the existence of Smite. Sun Wukong has had some pretty good mechanics this game. He was eating the basic attacks from me, so I couldn't get the tower. He's doing a good job of it. Athena, luckily, was able to just walk in and poke the tower once to get it. But the Sun Wukong was doing a pretty effective job of blocking me off of it. We hit the Heart Bomb. We are going to just push up this left lane. So after going into Aussie, we are going to be going into the Fail Knot. And then from the Retreat. Fail Knot, we're going to go into... They have an Afro, so I would go into a... This might have been the game where I tried out the new Shadow Steel Shuriken. Still don't have a whole lot of faith in that item. I think Toxic Bleak is a very reliable Retreat. item. But we might have tried out the Shadow Steel Shuriken, because we are going against an Afro. We're going to pick up the Fail Knot. The Fail Knot is going to give us 20% cooldown, a decent amount of power, and it's also going to give us crit chance whenever we ult somebody. There's going to be a 15% chance that anybody on our team can crit that target. So having the power from Transcendence, the Life Steal from Aussie, and the power and cooldown from the Fail Knot, we have the ability to get our damage off quite often in this game. And right now I feel like we are kind of more ability focused than attack speed or auto attack focused, but our auto attacks will still chunk. So we are four man grouped. They seem kind of scattered. If they don't group up and get together, we're just gonna be able to get this tower and then the enemy Phoenix. Retreat! Attack! Attack! Be 
We're going to go ahead and push the Phoenix. Sun Wukong is rotating behind us, but there are two people in mid, so we're absolutely going to be able to get this Phoenix. We're going to go ahead and ult. Sun Wukong is going to ult, so he's able to get out. Mercury dashes in, is able to get the pick onto me. It looks like our Poseidon is going to be able to get away, but the enemy team surrenders. Well, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you feel like you learned anything at all, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're looking for more Smite content, check out the channel and subscribe for more. The stats for this game will be posted in just a second. Thank you all for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.